Finally, Ricky Rubio has come back, kind of, to basketball. Hello, I'm Emmett Ryan, and well, this is definitely earlier than planned for our next video. I'm not going to joke about that, because of course, the big news this morning, uh, well, today, Monday, is that Ricky Rubio has agreed with Barcelona, well, asked, but Barcelona have agreed for him to practice with their team uh, with a view towards him getting back towards basketball. So in this video we're going to break down why Barcelona and uh, we're going to break down Ricky's situation as a whole and also then we're going to look at sort of you know what it means going forward and then one other thing which you may not have thought about but before we get to all that quick shout out for our competition which we're doing for the foreseeable uh just getting the finger in shot you can just about see it there i like it loud it's right there beside nikola Jokic. if this video gets over a thousand views and we're doing this for a lot of our videos anybody in the comments so you got a comment um we'll we'll pick a commenter out and we'll send you a copy of the book it's my book about uh, sort of my journey through the 2018-19 season which is kind of wild and yeah yeah so hope you enjoy that if you if you get that if you haven't got it already it's available for sale but now let's get to the big points so first of all let's just read the statement here from ricky rubio that barcelona basketball released in their instagram i have it in front of me uh, ricky rubio quoted here i have reached the final phase of my recovery after many weeks working on my body and mind i feel keen and strong enough to see how i feel with the ball in my hands with a ball in my hands my next step has been to ask FC Barcelona if I can, with no obligations and without interrupting their plans for this season, to train with them. I would like to say thank you in advance for their help and understanding with my situation. So we're going to get obviously to the broader Rick Rubio situation in the next segment of this video. But first of all, why Barcelona? And as you can see from the little clip I had at the start there, it really isn't a money call. Because more than likely, Pau Gasol is the example to look at here, and Mark actually, if I recall, he did the same as Girona. Uh, he'll probably take the minimum wage for the ACB, the Liga and Data, Spain's National League, which is around 60,000 per annum. So minor money, which all the, well, it's a lot of money to me and probably to you too, but for a basketball player in Spain, it's the minimum in a top flight. And I would expect that to be the deal, at least for, if he does sign with them, up until the end of this season because there's a few things here one it's you know budgets have been made out but two he's looking for a basketball situation which i'm going to get to that a bit as well more much more than a money situation he's pretty he's a smart guy with his cash so he's not needing a big payday here and even then it's going to be prorated so it wouldn't it would have been as though you know 60 grand based on playing from the start of the season back in the autumn obviously it's already the end of january now so realistically you're talking more in the 30s uh, range of salary for the rest of the season so other clubs would have been an option there as in much smaller clubs the other clubs that would have been discussed well one was real madrid and the reason i think he would have looked at real madrid was that one he wanted to be nearer to his family uh, which is like obviously the Barcelona region and two basketball in that the Real point guard situation right now is very well set so it w there weren't obvious minutes for him like obviously Ricky Rubio is tremendously talented but he would have been somewhat upsetting the balance there a bit and I think that's a situation he doesn't want to go into as a basketball player and two you look at the local teams around him that aren't Barcelona smaller but again money wouldn't have been a factor the obvious one would have been Jovan to Badalona who are you know, his boyhood club would have been a wonderful return. Don't get me wrong. And it could yet happen in the future. Never know. But right now, he would be asked to take on enormous minutes because they've had major injury issues this season across the board as a team, Badalona have. So you look at that and it's a huge ask on day one, essentially being asked to take the load all the way. They have got Euro Cup basketball, but they are in a fight to be relevant for the postseason there. And so it wouldn't have been ideal in terms of what he's trying to do. And then you've got Girona, who don't think they're playing any European competition this year. I should have checked that before this video, uh, but there you go. But again, probably not what he needs in terms of sort of, you know, being able to call his minutes, so to speak. Then you've got a Barcelona, where you've got Nicola Laprovitola, who has been great for them this season, but has had some injury issues. He's just back having missed three early rounds. He came back for the last round. And that was a second absence this season. So you've got Lapro, who's been great, but injury prone. And after that, they haven't been great in their backups at the point guard position. So Rubio knows he can go in as essentially the number two point guard, slotting in neatly 
and he's in a place where he wants to be and he's playing top tier basketball because Barcelona, they're title contenders again in Euro League this year, not quite as much as Real Madrid are, but again, the situation in terms of the amount of basketball, I think he'll want to play and the role he'll want to have getting back into basketball is best set there. And that comes back to this next segment. So we can't look at this in an island because obviously Ricky Rubio, fantastic NBA career, but he had to step away there for mental issues last August, uh, July, I think it was, sorry, or August, someone can correct me on that. But for four months, he'd stepped away anyway. And yeah, it was, you know, everybody wishing Ricky the best, obviously, at the time. But then came uh, the announcement, uh, start of this year, that he was retiring from the NBA. And he specified the NBA, not from all basketball. And those of you who visit the site regularly, and I'll link to it up here somewhere, uh, know that uh, Ricky's announcement really helped me address a lot of my own mental health issues I've been having in recent months and uh, sort of put words to that. So for that, I'm extremely grateful to Ricky Rubio. But yeah, I think for him with basketball, he doesn't want basketball to be over for him. But as any of you read the uh, interview with John Krasinski in The Athletic, and I'll link to that below, it was just, um, you know, not the right place for him and he's still trying to work his way back. Like, it's great to hear that he feels his recovery is going the way it should and I really, really do mean it when I say I wish him all the best because, uh, like I said, his words have meant a lot to me in terms of my own, managing my own situation. But, yeah, I think he needed to be in a situation where he could feel at his most comfortable and people he loves live near him in Barcelona. It's a smaller city than Madrid. It's still a, still a wild town, don't get me wrong, but you can have a much more sedate life there if you really want to. And I think that's what he kind of wants right now. Just focus on his family, maybe some basketball, and focus on his own mental health. And it's an easier city to do that in than, Real, than Madrid, in Real. Uh, sorry to any of the Estudiantes basketball fans there, because I know it's not just uh, Los Blancos town. But I think he was thinking, yeah, this makes so much sense. And he can make, you know, that's why I think Barcelona is such a good fit, because he can play the amount of basketball he wants to play without having to play be relied upon so to speak overly like there will the, he won't be having to be the guy but he'll be in a position where he can step up if he wants to so i think that's pretty good for him like you know athletes and we've seen it with more coaches as well uh you know even seen it with journalists and not just me in the sports side in our own in recent months i think we're becoming better at discussing our mental health issues and understanding that we don't even know the cause of them sometimes uh because quite often it's a lot of small things come together and I say small things, I mean lots of small things which build up into one enormous thing, you know? So, yeah, I'm hopeful that, because uh, he hasn't said he's going to sign yet, and uh, but I think he's going to, uh, but that's just my gut saying. But, you know, he's in the place where, you know, he feels he can control his situation, and that's that's great for him, and I'm really, really happy he has that. So what's next? Well, the big date to watch out for is coming up very soon. It's the 7th of February. That's the deadline for all players coming in from other leagues, etc., to register in EuroLeague. Actually, also for intra-EuroLeague transfers, too. So, Barcelona, if he is going to play for them in EuroLeague this season, and he's going to have to be registered by then. So, that's just over a week from when I'm putting this video up. So, it's a short window of time for both Ricky and Barcelona to make the decision. My money, you know, if it was being asked to put it down right now and saying he, he will agree to register because he doesn't have to play right away. They can work him in. They will have time to work him in. I wouldn't be surprised if they wait till after the Copa del Rey, uh, which is uh, in February as well. But we'll see what they do. I don't know when they'll bring him back, but I think he will come back this season. And I think he will be registered then by the 7th of February. And the reason I think that is, you look at Spanish national greats of the past, so many of them like to play their last big show showing is with the national team, or at least it's, it's, it is around then, or they have one final farewell with the national team. They like they make it clear in advance, this is it, this is the end. And I think with Ricky, there's a chance of going to another Olympics this year, where he broke onto the international scene in terms of the world learning about him. In 2008, like, he was 20, he was at 16, 17. It's crazy to even think about. And, you know, so getting, it was in the Olympics where he made that big impact. So, yeah, I think I think he's trying to get to Paris. They obviously have to play a qualifying tournament first. They'll be favourites in it, especially if they have him in the roster. But I think that's definitely been circled down by Rubio as something he would like to do. One more Olympics in Europe in particular, being in Paris. 
before he hangs up his kicks for good. Now, he may continue playing after this summer. I don't know that for sure. But I have a feeling that this Olympics is a big, big target for him to make sure he does. So I think that's what we should be looking at as being the reason I think we think he plays on this year. Also worth noting that his coach in Barcelona will be Roger Grimau, who he knows from you know playing with him as a very, very young man, as a teenager. So he has someone in Roger, in Grimau, who uh, knows him personally, uh, know, remembers you know, the amount of work he has to do as a very, very young man, and knows what will be required of him. Uh, as a coach to be able to work at Ricky so I think that's a great situation to be in and I think going forward that'll that'll work this season so here's the thing that many of our non-European viewers may not be aware he really is he's a lock for the basketball hall of fame and you might go but come on he was not the guy in the NBA he didn't really put up hall of fame numbers or have any seasons that stood out hall of fame quality wise that's right, but there's an international slot every year, and what Ricky's done in the Spain jersey alone basically means he walks into that. Like, he was probably a lock for the Hall of Fame before he actually suited up uh, day one in the NBA, or certainly was a favor to do it. And the only other player I can really put on that list who did go on to play significant years in the NBA, because obviously lots of players who haven't played in the NBA are in the Hall of Fame, uh, would be Luka Doncic. Uh, Luka's achievements in a Real Madrid and Slovenia jersey before he first suited up for the Mavs, basically made him a lock for the international slot, uh, you know, because he'd done so much at such a young age, obviously. Ricky's the same, but since then he's also had a couple of other big Euro basket wins, and of course was a key man in the 2019 World Cup win. So you add all that together, and his international catalog alone means you've got to assume at some point he's going to get that international slot and be voted into the Hall of Fame. So yeah, you probably weren't expecting that, but, you know, so it won't be the traditional route, and there'll be a few others you'd be surprised. Louis Scola, for example, no one would have said his NBA career was Hall of Fame worthy, but lots of people will look at his international body of work and go, yeah, he walks into the slot. He, Louis Scola is going to be a Hall of Famer, no question. And uh, not just FIBA, just to be clear, there is the FIBA Hall of Fame as well, but it'll go into the Naismith as well. So, um, Ricky will be there someday. It'll be a while, like, I'd, he's 32 now. I'd say he'll, let's say, let's say he retires this summer. you got out five years, 24. 2029, I think, probably won't be first ballot. Uh, don't get me wrong there. I don't think they're the first international slot because there's always a backlog. But I wouldn't be surprised if by like 2035, he's in the hall. Uh, so mark that one in your calendar, folks. And uh, for a long way from now. And if I'm wrong, you know, come back in the comments in uh, 11 years' time and uh, rinse me. So listen, that's all i got to say now. This is obviously being put together extremely quickly. But um, all the best to Ricky with whatever he does this season. Again, you know, I want to thank him because he um, helped me find my voice when it comes to my mental health stuff. And, uh, you know, uh, to do the annoying promo stuff, if you haven't already, please subscribe, like, share, comment. We keep giving away books uh, for videos that break a thousand. Uh, for people who leave comments, we'll, we'll give away one each video. So, yeah, I um, hope you enjoyed this. And there should be another video being suggested for you somewhere on screen around now as well.